welcome back to another video. Um, this is my fourth time recording this shit because I kept kept getting distracted, kept getting um uh, not distracted um interrupted. That's how I should say. It. Today's video is gonna be on takeoff and landing. I'm using historic simply for simplicity's sake. If you don't like the fact I'm using historic, just please don't say anything about it. I don't really don't care. Anyway, so we're going to be taking off and landing and my mic might be weird. If you hear my mic if you hear random noises it's just cuz my mic is weird. It's a I'm using my earbuds. Should automatically focus that out cuz settings I have it at. Anyway, as I was saying, when we take off, we're, we're first of all we're going to take off from Gloucester. So we're going to be using the P-51D dual bombs, the 500-pound bombs. And we're going to take off from right to left. I recommend taking off from right to left simply because you got open ocean in front of you instead of a mountain or a hill where you have to climb over that before actually being able to do what you're doing. So there are two runways to this, actually. There's one over there which we could taxi to, which we'd still have to deal with the hills instead of ocean and then we got this one way in this long one in front of us we're gonna use this long one in front of us because it gives us more runway to work with anyway so we're gonna taxi out and we're gonna use our rudder which also steers our back here so we're gonna taxi out we're gonna use this and when taxiing out it's pretty simple you just follow this taxiway and you should make it to the runway Unless you somehow get lost and turn into one of these tents and fuck up. That rarely happens, though. Again, following taxiway, it's very simple. I'm going to drop my flaps now to 50%. I recommend using flaps when taking off because it makes it a lot easier to get airflow under the wing and it, gets, it provides lift a lot earlier. I use 50% because that really works for some reason. So, yeah. It really works well. It, it works better than 25%, which you'd think 25% would work well. To be honest, you think 50% would actually slow you down. I think it actually does slow you down a bit, but still. Anyway, so we're going to taxi out the runway. We're going to line up, and then I'm going to show you guys where your fuel, speed, and altitude indicators are besides the two that are on top of your screen, underneath the score bars. So you got your guns. And you got your bombs. We're going to be using guns for this entire thing because if I accidentally click... Oh, no. If I accidentally click my guns, I just fire randomly into the air. Oh, well. It doesn't do much. Whereas, if I click the bombs, it's going to drop all my ordnance and we kind of need those today. So, here we are. We're at the runway. So, we're going to line ourselves up. Now, if you're in historic, you can line yourselves up in third person. If you're unrealistic, you use cockpit view, like so. Now, I'm going to show you guys where your speed, fuel, and altitude is. So your speed and altitude are right here. Speed on top, altitude on bottom. Now, to read the altitude, your big hand, the long hand, is hundreds of feet. And altitude is measured in feet. So if, that, if the little hand, the big hand, not the little hand, little hand we'll get to in a minute, if the big hand goes all the way around once, then you are at a thousand feet, which your little hand, the little fat hand that you can kind of see down there, will be at one. Now, if the little fat hand goes all the way around once and stops at one, you are at 10,000 feet. And each number that it goes all the way around and stops on will be how many ever feet you're at, how many ever thousands of feet you're at. So in this case, if it stops, if the little hand goes all the way around and stops at three, you're at 30,000 feet, which is, I recommend you stop climbing if you're at 30,000 feet because you are way too high. I don't even think the ceiling has 30,000 feet on it. I've been at 10,000 feet. Hell, I've been at like 20,000 feet. That's about as high as I've ever been. I have never gotten a bomber that high because these maps are way too small. I fucking want hamburger to come out already and use the fucking B-17. Anyway. Now, if the little hand goes all the way around, it can go all the way around like fucking 30 times and you'll be at 30,000 feet. Again, if you're at 30,000 feet, I recommend you stop climbing because you are higher than anyone ever is, will ever be. 
And at this point, you have the ultimate boom and zoom altitude. Nobody can touch you. Now, your fuel is right there underneath that little hand where under, in the dial where it says move stick forward to unlock your tail wheel, which is that wheel in the back that we use our rudder to turn. Yeah. So it's underneath that big hand. It says fuel. So we are at right around 13 pounds of fuel. Now, our fuel says 98.5%, but we're at about 13 pounds of fuel, or 1,300 pounds of fuel, I think. I don't know how high, uh, what it's measured in. I think it's hundreds of pounds. So we got 1,300 pounds of fuel, I think. Maybe, thir no, it's not 13,000, because we're not that heavy. Holy shit, why would we be that heavy? Anyway, so there's our fuel. And that's, if you're unrealistic, those are like your main three dials you need to focus on. Because the manifold pressure is fine. The RPMs are kind of important. If those are flux, if those are like, go if it's going up and then instantly going back down, going back up to the same one, then you're thro that usually is a problem on the Spitfire, but not with the P-51. I've never had that problem with the P-51. But if you're having that problem, say you're flying a Spitfire, you need, a, you need to basically just respawn. Because at that point, your plane is fucked up. And it's not going to do well in a dogfight. I mean, some people can make it work, but I can't really make it work. Usually, I just have to respawn. Anyway, so to take off, first we're going to make sure we're good on our tail. So our tail is good. So we're, we got enough. Then you want to gun your throttle. And this, I say gun your throttle, I mean put your throttle up to 100%. Now, to keep yourself in the middle of the runway, you want to basically make sure. Now, when you move, when you get up to speed, like 80 miles per hour, you want to pitch forward. And I think we already kind of achieved liftoff. So now you're level with the ground. So then you want to pull back. And there you go. You're off the ground. So then you pick your flaps up or put your gear up. But if you really just put your gear up, your flaps will go with it. That's, that's the best way to do it. You have, another, you have other fuel gauges right there too on, on your wings. We should probably level off. So yeah. You got other fuel gauges, but I don't think these fuel gauges actually work. Because you got a couple, see, you got a couple fuel gauges right there, but I don't think they actually work. Yeah, so here's the P 51. We've got two bombs. And we got D Day stripes. Yeah, you can see those D Day stripes. Anyway, so our mission, we're going to go bomb a destroyer. Because there's a destroyer over at Tallahassee that has offended me. I have no idea how it's offended me, but it has offended me. Now, if you're unrealistic, you can also, there's a way to tell where your enemy is. You don't have to use cockpit view the entire time. Now, those of you who are who are bright-eyed can immediately spot the destroyer. It's that little tiny speck in the middle in between the where the island kind of comes out. And it kind of goes over. You can see Talisi. Basically, it's right in between the two, the altitude and the speed indicators. You can kind of see it. You can actually start to see it. So that's our target. Now, I'm going to gain some more altitude because I need altitude. I want to be at least 6,000 feet before I bomb the shit out of this thing. And there we go. We have achieved 6,000 feet. So you can see the destroyer down there. Maybe. Let me check. Yeah, see, there it is right there. You can scan that point. If you don't see it, you're blind. So then just pitch forward. Drop your throttle, drop your flaps. See, put them in your sights. If you're, if you want to, you can shoot at them. You want to use your bombs though, for the most part. Shoot at them. Drop the bombs and then pull up and then put your, put your throttle back up and everything. And see, ground kill target, ground tar ground target kill, and that should sink the destroyer. See, there he goes. He's slipping under the waves. So that's also dive bombing, by the way. See, and now we're getting the hell out of dodge so that we don't get shot down. So then we're going to head back to the airfield, which is right there. Now, technically, we're already on a decent approach path if we're going to land on that short runway. But we're actually going to land on the long runway like we did last time, like the one we, the same one we took off from. Because if you look over there, remember how I said there's two runways? That might have been another recording. Actually, no, I don't think we're on a good approach path. No, we're not actually. We would have to veer over. We'd have to basically turn that way. That way over there to actually go land there. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to drop our throttle to 56%. That way we start dropping speed immediately. Because remember, I said that we're also going to... No, actually, I didn't say that. We're going to be uh, lumping landing into this as well. So we're going to drop our flaps. That way we should start slowing down enough to where I can put the gear out. Put the gear down. See, how the fuck did that guest get in? Oh, well. We're only going to be here just long enough to... Uh, land and then after that i'm gonna say a couple things before we leave by the way it is okay to do a go around so if, jesus christ there we go so if your gear doesn't want to come out see we're way we're really high so we can easily drop the speed but we're probably going to do a go around because we are way too close to the runway we have way too much speed so what we're going to do is we're going to abort the landing now, it's right there. Uh, there we go. He left. Perfect. I don't know how the fuck he joined. So, there we go. See, there's a runway. That's the same runway we're going to take off of. There's a small... You can see the smaller runway, too. Now, we should probably focus so we don't crash. So, we're going to go around. And we're going to put our... How the fuck? I know this ain't a public match. How the fuck... Did that guy get in? Usually private rooms, it's pretty simple. If it's a private room that you pretty much can get the point, don't join. But, oh well. Uh, we're only Again, we're only going to be sticking around long enough to land. So, see, now we've dropped our throttle all the way. That way we're dropping enough speed. Now, we're not really lined up very well, but we don't have... We're, we're going to say we don't have enough time to go around. All right, so now we're dropping throttle all the way. Now you can see uh, we're going 166 miles per hour. We are going really fast. So we can fire our guns. There we go, see. And we're going to go up this mountain. Hello. Hello, mountain. Now we're going to taxi back down the mountain because we don't need to be up on this mountain. Taxi back onto the runway. By the way, is he hostile? Yeah, he is. Well, I'm going to let him know something real quick. Yeah, we're going to see if we can leave. Oh shit, we didn't. No, we're not trying to take off again. There we go. Now you should see it. Anyway, so that is how you. Oh, look, we got our bombs back. Hello. So that is how you take off. That's how you land. And there he is. Yeah, oh, fuck it. Oh, dear God, he's not even fucking... He doesn't speak English. He might strafe us. I'm trying to see if we can get this guy out. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and leave. So, that is how you do. That's how you take off. That's how you land. It's also how you taxi if you didn't see the first video or didn't understand it. So, again, when you take off, you get enough speed. Put your, throttle, put your flaps down first. Get enough speed. I recommend don't do 100 flaps because that's actually just going to slow you down more than anything. So, get enough speed. Pitch forward just slightly, and then lift off. Now, I'm not going to do another recording of this video. This is the one I'm going to upload because I ain't doing another one. So you want to pitch forward just long enough, and then you want to lift off. You should be level with the ground when you pitch forward. 
Now when you land, typically you want, you want to try to land slower than I landed because, yeah, I didn't land very slowly. I actually landed a bit too fast. So you want to land a bit slower than I did, like probably more about 100 miles an hour, 115, 120. That's where you want to start. That's where you want to try to land. That's your like your golden spot because that means you can slow down enough time in enough time. You also want to get on the ground sooner than I did because I kind of bounced. Now there is a certain way you can land. Somebody else does it a little bit better, but you come in and you basically just let the ground effect put let you set down. So I hope y'all enjoyed that. It's pretty much also how you can do it in realistic as well. Um, other than that, I will see y'all in the next video. Have a nice night or morning or afternoon, whichever time you want it, watching this. See ya.